Good morning, America. This is Pastor John W. Hill speaking <coughs> from the Voice of Freedom. <coughs> I'm glad that you're here with us today, and I'm going to bring a sermon or a message for you that I hope will be enlightening to you and it will help you. Uh, I call it Just Israel. I'm going to speak to you about the nation of Israel. We have all heard before that the Israelites are God's chosen people. And I want to try to explain that statement as best I can. Now, nowhere in the Bible does it say that the Israelites or the Jews or the Hebrews are God's chosen people in those exact words. Okay? I had somebody to ask me one time about that, and it's true that those exact words are not used. However, the truth of that is correct. The Israelite people are God's chosen people because I'm going to give you a scripture that will not say that exactly, but it proves it. And it will be my text for today, and I hope it will be helpful to you. Amos chapter number 3 and verse number 2, you only. Yahweh said, you only. Speaking of Israel, have I known of all the families of the earth? Now, the word no is a, a very intimate word. And it, it, it is a very personal and infant, intimate word. And God said of Israel, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Well, we know that God has mental knowledge of the Philistines, doesn't he? The Jezreelites and the Moabites and the Amaleks. He has mental knowledge of all these people. So what was God saying there? He was saying that he had ordained and he had a covenant with the nation of Israel going all the way back to Abraham, uh, their forefather. Now, <clears throat> there is a promise to move on. Remember this now. This is important. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. That is an Old Testament scripture in a minor prophet, Amos chapter 3 and verse number 2. Now, we can also see uh, this extenuated in the book of Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3. Yahweh, God Almighty, said <clears throat> to Abraham, I will bless them that bless thee, I will curse them that curse thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth, which would mean nations, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And so, if you want to be blessed, you need to be pro-Israel. This is extremely important. Whether it is on a national basis, or whether it is on an individual basis, I am pro-Israel. Our church here at Freedom Baptist Church in Aden, North Carolina, we are pro-Israel. Our country is supposed to be pro-Israel. I'm not sure if that is the case or not. I better withhold my statement on that. But nonetheless, I desire for our country to be pro-Israel. God will bless you. He will bless your family. He will bless our country if you love the Israelite people. Now, the Bible tells us in the book of Psalms 122 and verse number 6, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They that love thee shall prosper. Do you want to prosper? That's not my promise. It's a direct quote from the Word of God. God said if you would pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and it seems to me that Jerusalem has had anything but peace for quite some time. Wouldn't you agree with that? When you pray for the peace of Jerusalem indirectly, you may not realize it, but you are praying for the soon return of Yeshua, the Messiah, the anointed of Yahweh that we know in the English language as the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, because that's what you're really praying for. Because Jerusalem will have no peace until the Messiah returns and he sets up peace on the earth. The Bible says his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Watch it now. The Prince of Peace. And that would be the Lord Jesus Christ, would it not? Now, the Word of God tells us in the book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse 22 through 31. I won't read it or quote it all right now, but... Let me give you uh, the story here. One time, uh, long years ago, 
there was a man by the name of Abraham that God called out of the Ur of Chaldees and said, go to a land that I'll show you. He was obedient unto God. And in latter years, he, he had a son by the handmaiden by the name of Hagar. And Hagar had a son. He, the son's name was Ishmael. Ishmael, the Bible says, was a wild man. His hand was against every man, and every man's hand was against him. And he is the father of the Arab, uh, Arab people. Ishmael is. And that was by the bondwoman, Ishmael. Uh, his mother's name was Hagar. Somewhat later, he also had another son. And this son was by his wife, Sarah, who is the free woman. And this son's name was Isaac. Now the Bible tells us that Isaac was of the free woman. Hagar is of the bond woman. And the Bible says that the bond woman cannot be uh, the heir with the free woman. The son of the bond woman with the son of the free woman. Now what this means is that all of the, the Arab people came from Hagar. All of the Israelite people came from Isaac. And that is where this conflict began at that point in time. I could go in quite a bit of detail, but let me move on. Now, in the process of time, the Arab nations, and not them only, but other nations, and even some individuals in our own country have this same attitude that was prophesied long years ago in the book of Psalms, chapter number 83 and verse number 4. For they have said, Come, let us cast them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel be no more in remembrance. Many times to this day, if, if you were able to go into an uh, a Islamic uh, congregation, and I have seen this before, they would have a sign on the side in uh, Arabic that says, Death to Israel. Death to Israel. Let me implore you not to have this attitude, for if your attitude is death to Israel, that means that you are a cursed individual. And the nation that has this attitude is a cursed nation. Remember what God said, I will bless them to bless thee, I will curse them to curse thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So let's be blessed people by loving Jerusalem. Let's be blessed people by loving the nation of Israel and praying for them and being as supportive as we possibly can in any way that we can. Now, <clears throat> to carry this just a little bit further, the Bible does tell us in the book of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse number 9, that Israel will be hated of all nations. The day is coming that even the United States of America is going to turn completely against Israel, the Bible says. For this is something that will expire in the great tribulation period. Said, you shall be hated of all nations. Now, let me explain this to you. Israel, uh, blindness in part has happened to Israel because Israel rejected the Lord Jesus. Now, let me, let me use a scripture in Luke 21, 24. Now, get this, please. The Bible says concerning the nation of Israel, they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden underfoot of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now, when the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled, that would be at the end of the great tribulation period when the Messiah, the Lord Jesus, returns from the wedding wherein he has married the bride to set his kingdom up on the earth for 1,000 years. And so Jerusalem has been dispersed all the way across the whole world. But you know what? In May of 1948, Israel flew the flag or the Star of David again. And now the Israelites are coming back to the homeland as it was prophesied. 
before I go there, and I'm going to talk about that, I want to talk to you about the number of the Israelite people. Now, this is, uh, this is something you might want to check behind me on. But, you know, the Bible tells us God told Jacob. Remember when Jacob wrestled with the angel of the Lord and, and he said, the angel of the Lord said, turn me loose, and Jacob wouldn't do it. He wrestled all night long, and he wouldn't do it. So the angel of the Lord touched Jacob in the, in the thigh right here, in the hip, and he limped from that day on. But he still wouldn't let him go, even with a limp. So the angel of the Lord blessed him. And you know what the angel of the Lord did? He, na- he changed his name. He changed his name from Jacob, and it says in the book of Genesis thirty-five eleven, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. And that's where the name Israel actually came from. And he said of Jacob, now listen, Thy name shall be called Israel, thou shalt be a nation, watch it now, and a company of nations. A company of nations? Well, I understand nations, that would be Israel, wouldn't it? But what's this company of nations mean? How does that fit into the pitch? Well, let's carry it a step further. In the book of Genesis twenty two seventeen 17 and many other scriptures, the Bible makes the statement that the children of Israel would be as the stars of heaven and as the sand of the seashores of the world. Now, how much sand is on the seashores of the world? You know, there's just as many stars now we know as there are sands on the seashores of the world. And that is one of the ways that we know for a fact that the Word of God is impeccable because no scientists of that day could have known it. But let me tell you here. According to uh, the records, there's somewhere between 15 and 16 million, not billion, but million Hebrew people. Okay? But would 15 million constitute the sands of the seas? Does that make sense? Something's missing somewhere. You know what? There's more than 15 to 16. If you look it up on the computer, it's going to say 15 to 16 Jews in the world today. That's what it's going to say. But there must be more than 15 or 16. How does this work? Let me explain it to you. Well, in the end of Jacob's life, he had a son by the name of Joseph. And when he, when he uh, forwarded the blessings to the children of Israel, the two sons of Joseph were named Manasseh the older and Ephraim the younger. And he gave them a shared blessing. Now, it says, you can read this for yourself. It says in the book of Genesis, chapter 48, verse 11 through 19. But I'm going to major on verse 19. Verse 19. Now, when these young men came to Jacob to receive the blessing, the elder would always get the right hand and the young of the left hand to receive the blessing. And so, what Joseph did, he put... Manasseh on his left side so that when he came forth to Jacob, Jacob's right hand would touch him on the head. And he put Ephraim on his right side so when he came to Jacob, Jacob's left hand would touch Ephraim the younger. But when he got the two up before Jacob, Jacob did not put his right hand on Manasseh. He reached over and put his right hand on Ephraim the younger, which was so to speak, out of text. And he put his left hand on Manasseh. And he, he pronounced the blessing. But Joseph, he frowned. And Joseph said, not so. Uh, uh, Manasseh is to receive your right hand. He's the elder. And, and Jacob said, I know, my son, I know. He shall be uh, a great nation. He shall be a nation. And No, you said he shall be a nation and a great people. Now, Manasseh is going to be a nation and a great people. And then he said, but Ephraim, Ephraim shall be greater than him. The younger is going to be greater than him, and uh, there will be a multitude of nations in him. Now, the conventional belief is that uh, Manasseh would be America and Ephraim would be England. However, that is really not what I see. And this is very important. I want the people in America to know this. This is very important. Now, it doesn't make sense to say 
that Manasseh would be America being the elder and Ephraim being the younger would be England. I think that is turned around exactly backwards. I really believe what the case is that Ephraim being the younger would represent the United States of America and Manasseh would represent England because England was here first and uh, Ephraim came later to found America. Let me ask you a question. Who was it that got Hitler off the back of the UK? It was America, wasn't it? It was really Ephraim's what it's talking about. Ephraim, America is greater in anybody's book than England. It is stronger. It is uh, more economic sound. You name it. America is the greatest country in the world. I expect it's the greatest country that's ever lived. We'll put Israel aside for a minute. The greatest country that's ever been. Yes, Ephraim will be much greater than Manasseh. And the way this works is the, the, the uh, emblem of the camp of Ephraim would be the bull. And the, Engl the Hebrew word for that is angle. So when the Anglo-Saxons, which would mean Manasseh and Ephraim came into England many, many long years ago. The Anglo-Saxons, the angle means the bull. That's where Johnny Bull, their mascot, came from, like our Uncle Sam. And that would mean all these people came there in England. But when America was founded, many of the English people, like my last name is Hill, that is an English name. My people came from Devon County, England. These people, they went to America and uh Plus, when you read the Scriptures, many times in the Old Testament, if you read it and you put Ephraim there and put America where Ephraim's at, it'll make good sense to you. For one example, the, the falling of the Twin Towers, that was prophesied, of course, in the book of Isaiah chapter 9. So let me move on a little bit. There are many Israelites in America and in England and across the world. Well, someone would say, well, John, how is it that a great company of nations, that sounds more like England, but think about it this way. Have you ever thought before that everybody in the United States of America, except the Native Americans, which would be the Indian people, they represent some other country? Have you ever thought about it that way? I'll assure you Ephraim is the United States of America rather than Manasseh. What does all this mean? It means that Israel has been dispersed around and now they're beginning to come back. God said he was going to bring them back and they were going to be raised up to be a great nation. In the book of Ezekiel 36, 22, God said, I'm not doing it for their sake. He's saying, I'm doing it for my holy name's sake. And in the book of Ezekiel 37, 1 through 10, the Bible says the bones come together. That is the regathering of Israel. And finally, Ezekiel prophesies to the wind and breath comes in them. That will be midway the great tribulation period. Now let me say to you right now, there are some Israelites that are saved. But Isaiah cried concerning Israel and said, though the seed, though the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant shall be saved. Out of all of the Hebrew people right now, only a remnant is saved because they do not believe that the Messiah has yet come. Therefore, only a remnant is saved. But the Bible also says there's coming a day when they will all turn back to the Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of Romans chapter 11, verse 25 and 26, Wherefore, brethren, I would not that you be ignorant of this mystery lest you be wise in your own consents that blindness in part has happened to Israel. Because Israel has rejected the king of kings, blindness in part has happened to Israel. But when midway of the tribulation period comes and the Antichrist pronounces himself to be God Almighty and demands that they worship an image to the beast and they remember the Ten Commandments, thou shalt have no graven image before me, they will realize that Jesus truly was the Messiah and the whole nation of Israel will turn to God in one day. The Bible says in Romans 11, verse number 26, it says, and so all Israel shall be saved. All Israel shall be saved. Every last one of them is going to turn to God. That is... 
You may not understand this statement I'm going to make. That is, that's a full-blooded human being. There are some people today, and I won't call their names. I know many of them's names. I won't call their names. But there are many people today that are in high places that are 100% for the New World Order, the Oros, Dora, uh, the Doris Ordo Seclarium on your dollar bill, the New World Order of the Ages. They're all the way for it. They're in it, lock, stock, and barrel. It's a good chance that some of these people have been genetically altered. You can get my free DVD on this, Half Man and Half Devil. And I'll try to help you with that. But I want you to note, I want you to note, dearly beloved, that all Israel is going to turn back to the Lord Jesus. And God wants us to support the nation of Israel. You know, you can find this in the book of Matthew, chapter number uh, 25 and verse number 35. The Bible says that uh, it's talking about the Gentilic judgment of the nations. Jesus is going to separate the sheep from the goat. And these are Gentile people that have been pro-Israel. They have believed on the Lord because they believed on Jesus. They are pro-Israel. Everybody that believes that Jesus is Messiah should be pro-Israel. And he's going to separate the sheep from the goat. He's going to put the sheep on the right hand and the goat on the left. He'll say to the ones on the right hand who are sheep that are Gentiles that were pro-Israel, he'll say, come blessed to my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for thee from the foundation of the world. Well, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty you gave me to drink. I was sick and you visited me. I was naked you clothed me. And, and so on and so on. And they say, Lord, when will we hungry, naked, and, and, and so forth and so on? Jesus will say, in that you did it to these, the least of these, in that you did it to, to the least of these, my brethren, you did it unto me. In other words, when you bless and you help an Israelite person, it is like blessing it is like helping the lord jesus that's what he's saying and then he says to those on his left hand depart from me you're cursed in the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels prepared for the devil and his angels verse 46 it says these shall go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into life eternal he said, because I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty and you didn't give me to drink. I was naked and you didn't clothe me. I was in prison and you didn't come visit me. It's talking about individuals that hate the nation of Israel. There's a burning hell waiting for these folks. You see, they're not saved by doing this. They do this because they have trusted in the Lord and been born again. Now, I want you to note in the book of Matthew 24 and verse number 34, the Bible said to learn a parable of the fig tree. When it puts forth its buds and the leaves, you know summer's nigh. That's talking about the return of the Lord and the fig tree is Israel. And the fig tree budded in May of 1948. It goes on down and Jesus says, I want you to understand that this generation shall not pass until all these things be fulfilled. And so the nation of Israel one day is going to return to the Lord. And it can't be all that far off because Israel became a nation and the fig tree is Israel and it budded in my belief in May of 1948. Therefore, we know this generation that was born, uh, whatever a generation is, will not die out until Messiah returns. Are you ready to be with the Lord Jesus Christ? Now I would like to say to the Hebrew people that might be listening in, if you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ in this time, this day and age, there's no difference between you and a Gentile. We all make up the bride of Christ. We all make up the Israel of God. The Bible says we've all been by one spirit, been baptized into one body, whether we be Jew or Greek, whether we be born or free, and we've all been made to drink into one spirit. So if you are a Hebrew or you are a Gentile, there would be no advantage either way. If you believe on Jesus, we belong to the bride of Christ. Now the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter number 10 and verse number 12, there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek for the same Lord is rich unto all them that call upon his name. He's rich unto everyone. There's no difference at all. So, a few Hebrew people have been born again. And they've been saved. And they believe the gospel. But the great majority do not. Yet, we still love them. Because God loves them. 
And God has not lost them. God is going to bring them back to himself. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. They have gone astray. But here at Freedom Baptist Church, we are pro-Israel. We love the nation of Israel. And I would warn everyone that's against the nation of Israel, there would be a curse residing on your head unless you're willing to repent and love the nation of Israel and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Have you been saved? You can be saved by believing on the Lord Jesus. If you would like to accept Christ, pray with me, please. Our Father, I would like to trust in Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I believe Jesus died on the cross, that he was buried, and the third day he bodily rose from the dead. And Lord, I accept Jesus as my Lord and my Savior, and I ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I would like to take this opportunity uh, to say that if you have trusted Christ, I want to say congratulations to you. That means that you are in uh, you are a member of the real church, the ecclesia, the called out assembly. It doesn't matter what denomination you are in. If you trusted in the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that means you're in the real church, the church of God. That means you're in the body of Christ. That means you make up the bride of Christ. You are the Israel of God. You are a holy nation and a royal priesthood. That means you got it in Jesus' name and nobody can take it from you. How about that? Isn't that good to know that we belong to the Lord? Gather around, children. The cross upon which Jesus died It's a shelter in which we can hide